submitted for your microprocessing and microcontrolling approval. I give you the Arduino CO2 part per million meter. So we're using once again the MQ135 environmental sensor and it's just hooked up with plus 5 volts ground and it's analog input coming over to A0. We've got an LED here hooked up to digital 9 and it's got a 220 ohm resistor on the cathode. We got the 0.96 inch OLED screen, 5 volts ground, SLK to A5, SDA to A4. So that's all there is to it. Let's go take a look at the code. Okay, here's the code for the CO2 carbon dioxide parts per million meter. Now just some uh, numbers here. We know that the basic atmospheric CO2 level is 400 parts per million. The average indoor CO2 levels are 350 to 450 parts per million. And the maximum acceptable CO2 is considered to be 1,000 parts per million. CO2 starts becoming dangerous at 2,000 parts per million. So those are our levels and thresholds. Libraries, we need the wire library for the OLED screen. Well, these are all for the OLED screen. We need the graphics library so we can draw the bar graph. And we need the driver library so we can use the OLED couple of defines here are analog input A0, that's the analog output from the MQ135. Digital trigger, I put on digital 2, but you know what, I'm not even using it. Now our CO20 is 55. What you have to do is stick your sensor outside, you know, away from the street in your nice backyard for 10 minutes or so. Get the reading, figure out what you need to subtract from that reading to end up around the 400 level, which is the atmospheric CO2. Now our LED is on pin 9 and the OLED reset is on pin 4. Even though we're not using it, it's still there. Then we're going to create an instance of the Adafruit SSD 1306 library called Display. In Setup, Pin Modes. Input, trigger, and LED. Always do the serial begin so I can debug. And we start the display at the hex address of OX3C. If you're using this Adafruit library, it wants to see your OLED screen at the address OX3D is in Delta. So if you're having trouble, you might want to check that. Display, display, and clear display to set up the display so we're ready to go. Now we have our variables and we create an integer array called CO2 now with 10 spots. That is for our averaging. CO2 raw, also an integer. CO2 comp, which is the compensated CO2. That's the CO2 minus our zero level, our CO2 parts per million. A variable called ZZZ because I ran out of catchy CO2 names and one called graph X. So we're going to start each loop by clearing the previous display and we are going to take 10 samples of the CO2 level over 2 minutes or over 2 seconds. So to do that we create this for loop for x equals 0 x less than 10 x plus plus CO2 now position x and remember these are zero reference so we start at 0 and go to 9 is equal to analog read of a0 then we wait 200 milliseconds. After we filled up the array, then we are going to add our samples together with another for loop. And we say ZZZ equals ZZZ plus CO2 now X. Once we have that all added up, our CO2 raw level is ZZZ divided by 10. That gives us our average. Then we get our compensated value by subtracting CO2 zero from CO2 raw. And then we're going to map that out for our atmospheric levels. Since we know that the analog input can produce a value from 0 to 1023, we want our R0 level to be about 400 and our max to be 5000. That is going to give us our regression so that we can print out our PPM levels. Next we do our uh, printing. So we set our text size as 2, text color is white, and the cursor at 0, 0, we print a title, CO2 level. Then we're going to skip a line. That's the print line there. 
we're going to print out our CO2 ppm and then we're going to skip a space and print out our units which is parts per million and then we are going to map our graph x value to our CO2 parts per million from zero to a thousand which is the maximum acceptable level zero to 127 which is the width of the screen so if our parts per million is 400 it's going to come out at zero and we're going to be at zero if our parts per million comes out at a thousand which is the max over here then we're going to be at 127 which is the right hand side of the screen to draw our graph and we draw our graph with this command display dot fill rectangle x position y position starting with height and color then we show everything we've just done and then finally we determine whether or not to turn on the LED if CO2 ppm is greater than 999 turn it on otherwise it's off that's it let's go check it out in All right, let's action. power this bad boy up we get our splash screen and let's zoom in so you can get a better idea uh, the flickering is only from the camera we are not seeing any of that IRL now the ppm level is a little high because of all the CO2 that my mouth hole is expelling towards the sensor but what we've got is our title CO2 level 440 or whatever parts per million and then this bar graph that would be zeroed out at 400 and maxed out at a thousand so you can see if I hook some co2 on her there the graph goes up and down and your ppm level goes up and down now if we breach the threshold that I set what was it a thousand might be two thousand then the LED will go off to also warn you now what I'm thinking about doing with this is making it permanent in this little enclosure I got here I think this would make a nice little box um, probably switch this over to a nano take the MQ-135 put it up here put the OLED screen here then I've got a switchy switchy on off pop it over on the side power it with a 9 volt battery and Bob's your uncle so I hope you like this little project really quick easy give you a nice ppm meter and you know these things are like four hundred to five hundred dollars to buy retail why not make your own with a five dollar meter a five dollar OLED and a five dollar Arduino fifteen bucks just as good as store bought plus you did it yourself alright I'll see you next time like share comment and don't forget to subscribe.